Welcome back. It's good to be back. Subscribe if you're new and please throw down a like. It takes a lot for me to put together a YouTube video these days, so I'd greatly appreciate if you could throw down a like for the effort. Thank you. Last time I posted, I was talking to you guys about earning my PGA Tour Canada card for the 2022 season, which was very exciting. And now that we're kind of towards the end of my time on the PGA Tour Canada season, unless I should get some sponsors exemptions, which I would not say no to, I figure I would talk about my experience so far this year on PGA Tour Canada while going through a little nine hole course vlog at TPC Toronto Osprey Valley, one of my favorite courses I've played in the Great North. But first, I would like to thank the sponsor of today's video, GolfTrainingAids.com. I've gotten a number of things off the GolfTrainingAids.com website that I use every single day. The first thing being this Golf Forever fitness trainer. It starts off as a very sturdy stretching pole that I can do pretty much everything I need to get warmed up for a round. It starts off as a very sturdy weighted stretching pole that I can use to do pretty much everything I need to get ready for a round. But most importantly, it comes with all the attachments you need to get in a great at-home golf-specific workout. The second training aid that I use every single day is this Perfect Practice Putting Mirror. I use this to check my eye line, make sure my left eye is directly over the ball, and my shoulder line to make sure everything's squared up. Last product I use every day is the Striker 3000 compression board. Just throw this on the ground on the range. Put a ball between the lines here and it ensures that I make solid contact every time. Guys, if any of the training aids I just mentioned sound like they'd be useful to you, head over to GolfTrainAids.com to see what else they have to offer. And while you're there, use promo code HADDEN10 for 10% off your entire order. Thank you to GolfTrainAids.com for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to the action. I got a 291 to where I'm trying to hit it. Just trying to hit it over the center of the bunker. If I can get this thing to fly about 260, we'll be in good shape. No glove, we'll see how this goes. Should be about perfect. We got 242 middle, 237 flag. Pretty into, so this might be not enough. I'm hitting a four iron here, but I'm gonna try and hit this thing low, get it below the wind. If I come up short, I'm totally fine with that. Long just looks like it's not great. Oh, draw. That's not gonna cover the bunker. Kinda left it out to the right just a bit. Ah. Hello. Got about six yards of green to work with. Rather deep bunker here. Nice little tester, first hole of the day. I haven't hit a bunker shot since I started playing out here a few days ago, so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Turn out pretty good? Yeah. Now I gotta rake up my stuff as well as the last person to be in this bunker. Guys, rake the bunker. Let's go hit a putt. Got about a nine footer here. A lot of all right, is it still working? There's not a group behind us. I'm not super worried. Oh my gosh, quite the windy day. Holy smokes. All right, let's play this thing straight in. God, the putter was getting blown away on that one. Yeah, this has been. I guess I'll just run through like what I got back. All 15 clubs that were stolen were returned. Basically just like everything that was in the bag club wise, like everything that was in the club dividers was returned. Um, everything that was in the, like the, the apparel pocket, all that stuff has not been returned. So range finder, microphones, AirPods were recovered, but they're still sitting in evidence at the police department. And I sent a spreadsheet of everything that was in the golf bag. It's honestly like, I just want the whole thing to be over. The money's to the first tee, I got my clubs back. I'm gonna be making a, uh, a kind of a run through of what we were able to do with that first tee money. Um, next time I'm in Kansas City, I'm gonna try to get together with the first tee and, and interview them. Just overall make like a recap of what happened that week. It's, uh, it, it was a positive, it was a positive. I'm just tired of dealing with it. <laughs> Hang on, right there. Quit it, Win. Quit it. That fairway? Yeah. Not as not as far as you think, it's like before that. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know why I thought that thing was gonna, that's probably like 400 to where I was yeah. looking. We got 169 flag from here, 472 yard par four. I poked that. I got 169 in. This score's this gonna play long. That club is gnarly. Let's use this Groove It brush to clean it up a little bit, shall we? Perfect. 169 into uphill, probably playing 75, into the wind, playing 85. It's just starting to feel like a uh, choke down a couple inches on a seven iron, knock one in there low, shall we? A little heavy. See how this turns out. Pin high, not bad, probably about 30 feet. Figure out the speed. I've been told these greens are a little slow. Oh, dig. 
All right, we'll tap in par. It's 472 points, we'll take that. Got into the first event of the season. When you get into one of the first events of the season on conditional status, it's essentially a tryout. And if you make the cut and play well, then you have a pretty solid chance of getting in on the reshuffle, which means your guaranteed starts for the second half of the season. Now, if you miss the cut, you're pretty much just out of luck and it's thanks for coming. I uh, hope you enjoyed your time in Canada. And that's pretty much, spoiler alert, that's kind of what happened to me. I played well, you know, made 10 birdies, honestly, like played solid golf, just made way too many mistakes. Was that a combination of not seeing the course because I got into the event so late? I got in on Monday, got there on Tuesday and had to walk the course during a pro-am, so didn't even get to really walk the fairways or anything. Was it a combination of nerves plus that? Probably. Really what it comes down to is I need I need to be better about avoiding bogeys. So that's been the focus in the last few months. Really, next time I get an opportunity like that, if I play badly, I need to be able to avoid bogeys and salvage birdies when I can and make cuts when I get those opportunities. Making a triple and eight bogeys, you're just not gonna make a cut when you do stuff like that. We got a 420 yard par four here. About actually measuring at about 430. And to those bunkers up there, it's 344. But into the wind, I don't think I can quite get there. So. We're gonna go ahead and hit driver. Oh, that's left. Get lucky. Thought bounce. Yeah. Should be able to play it. That was very armsy. So I've definitely been penalized for hitting it here, but I wouldn't say I'm totally out of it. And that's what I appreciate about this length of gorse is that I'm going to have to pay a price for hitting it here. But being used to playing in Kansas where if you hit it in the gorse, you're just auto re-teeing. This is, this is fine. I'm totally okay with this. Got 146 to the flag from here. Pitching wedge on it or a nine iron, get it up near the green, try to get up and down for par. A couple of things I almost always do from this kind of stuff, fescue, gorse, whatever you want to call it. I choke down pretty much to the steel on whatever club I'm hitting. And then I just focus on getting it rolling. So I'm trying to get this up in the air, but I want to land this probably five or six yards short of the green. <laughs> oh, that came out really hot. Down ball, down ball. Sit. Sit. Just barely in the rough over the green. That came out steaming. Here's my ball, and here's how close we were to making uh, quite the thumbnail. How far are we here? I was about, I'd say that's two and a half feet away from dunking out of the fescue from 150. Nice little bump and run pitch here. I'm gonna take my 60 degree. Typically, I reach for the 60 when I'm around the greens. I don't, I don't change it up a whole lot unless I'm hitting a really long up bump and run. Or if I'm dead into the grain, I'll use my 54 because I feel like I can make better contact into the grain with the 54 having more bounce. Just gonna try to land this 60 right about here, roll it up the slope. It's gonna move a little bit from right to left. Oh, what a kick. I'm really confused by that. This whole green slopes this way. That kicks straight right and forward. All right, play this thing about a ball and a half out to the right. Nice. nice Take that. The next three events of the season, I actually didn't get in on status, um, but I flew out to Toronto to play the, the Monday qualifier for the Osprey Valley Open because that was my last chance to get in on the reshuffle. So I took the cheap flight up to Toronto, I played in the Monday qualifier and didn't play my best. I buried my last three holes to shoot 68, which was cool, except for 64, got into a playoff. Pain. Got 158 to this flag, playing 161. Yardage courtesy of the Voice Caddy SL2. Lincoln Bio, go get you one. And I pulled it a little bit. Come on, wind. Get up a little. Oh, I just didn't hit it. I think that had to have been pretty much straight into. That's disappointing on a 160 yard par three. It's got to release a little, I think, but should be just fine. Oh, didn't give it enough. Disappointing to make bogey on the 17 handicap hole. Another par four here. Got bunkers on the right that I'm gonna try to keep it left of. 444 yard hole. Got a little bit of wind off of the right here, maybe helping just a tad, mostly off the right. I'm gonna start this thing at that uh, far left bunker on the right, let it curve back. Catch the fairway. It's 
Landing left center of the fairway, see if it stays in, maybe not. Turning left pretty good. Fairways are pretty soft, so we did manage to catch the short grass here. Yardage is 99 yards. It's gonna hit a nice little lob wedge here. Straight down wind, the shot's probably playing right around 90. Gonna give this a nice smooth swing, try to stick one close, get that bogey back in the last hole. Spin back a little bit, and that should be quite makeable. Wow, that dove. Nope. Ah, bummer. I stick stuck around because I'm still in Canada. Might as well stick around, go play in a couple more Mondays, maybe string together some top 25s, get some points, and either get into second stage or at least get in on next season. Um, play the next two Monday qualifiers in Toronto and Montreal, Quebec, and miss both of those and just kind of flew home. Played in a mini tour event after the second Monday qualifier. Shot a couple under, made a small check, but overall the trip to Canada was not exactly what I would call a success on the golf course. Now, every time I take big long trips like that and I spend a bunch of time around some of the best players in the world, I learn things about my game and myself. And I like to think that every time I fail during one of these trips, I learn something about what's gonna make me a better player. And I picked up a couple things about my golf swing. I picked up a couple things that I want to focus on going forward with my golf game. And I made some changes based off of that. Made a couple changes to my putting to be a little bit more solid. Switched to cross-handed, which I always, I've always felt more comfortable cross-handed. I don't know why I continue to try, to try to go back to regular. And introduced more of a tempo, rhythm, thought to my pre-shot routine. So hopefully that makes me a little bit more solid, eliminates some of the big errors gives me more opportunities to stay in tournaments in the future. Got number seven, a par three, 205 to the middle of the green, and kind of howling downwind. Got 214 flag, straight downwind. I'm gonna take a little seven iron here. All right. Oh. Gonna be a lot of break to this one. A little 15 footer. That is a lot of wind. Good effort, Ben. Incredible. Oh, this has not been my best effort. Pretty straightforward here. 524, par five, straight down wind. No questions as to my game plan here. That went a really long way. Well, there's the tee, there's the ball, there's the flag. GPS tells me this was a 360 yard drive into an upslope. So I imagine it pretty much flew right to here. Eagle here, that would get rid of that double pretty quick. Got 170 flag, a little bit uphill, not much. Still very downwind. I'm gonna hit a 155 shot. It's kind of moving left a little bit. Sit on it. Got a 27 footer here, maybe one degree of slope from left to right. I'm gonna give this thing about a cup out, cup and a half out to the left. Most important thing here is just trusting my speed. Man, it is slow out here. Not hitting it hard enough, man. Uh, birdie's a birdie, we'll take that. Going forward. Um, playing the Oklahoma Open next week in Edmond at Oak Tree East Golf Club. Week after that, I'm going on vacation. My first vacation since I turned pro. That's going to be very exciting. Take Just take three days, put the clubs away, try to relax. And then Nebraska Open, September 9th to 11th. And then Corn Ferry Tour Q School. So that's the other big kind of announcement, I guess, is that I've signed up for Corn Ferry Tour Q School for this year. It was expensive. It required some fundraising. Everybody who helped with that, I know some of them want to remain, remain anonymous. Thank you to Par Points for helping me get to Corn Ferry Tour Q School. It's an incredible opportunity, really excited for it. And the game is definitely good enough. We can make a run, we can get through Corn Ferry Tour Q School, maybe even get ourselves a little PGA Tour card with the new rules that they put in place. That would be ultra mega sick. But taking it one step at a time, Corn Ferry Tour first stage of Q School is coming up next. So I'm gonna try, go try to play some good golf there, get through and then move on to the next bridge. Number nine, 432 yard par four. Looks like about 300 is a good shot here. It's out into the fat part of the fairway. So we're gonna downwind, probably just hit a two iron. Driver seems a tad bit aggressive. Uh, 
Nice ball. Thank you. Well, two iron was certainly the right club. Middle of the fairway, fat part, front pin, we got 106. Quite a ways uphill, probably playing like 110. Nice little choke down 54. I want this thing to be a little bit more controlled with the spin, so play this just a little bit out to the right, let it come back. I'm gonna hit about a 100 yard shot with this 54 degree. Oh, no action to the left. Looks like it was the right distance though. Should be about a 10 footer for birdie. Got a 10 footer for bird here, just like, just like I predicted. Got it about a cup and a half out to the right. A words of encouragement from Michael, I'm ready to go. I'm gonna get this one to the hole, you guys watch. I sure did. Golly. <laughs> Not exactly my best putting performance today, but. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, my YouTube statistics say that chances are if you're watching this video, you are not subscribed. So let's change that. It's free. And if it turns out that you don't like me, you can just unsubscribe. So really no risk at all. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button, make us both slightly happier people.